So who are you? I'm Evan Solomon. I'm the VP of Marketing at Justin TV. Yeah. And uh, tell me what Justin TV is today because sure. it's so changed quite a bit. It has it's changed quite a bit, and I think it's going to change more in the future. Um, essentially, we are very basically a way that anybody can share live video uh, with anybody in the world. As you can see right now, we're doing it ourselves. Yeah. Um, so the same way YouTube lets you, you know, upload something that you've recorded in the past, uh, Justin TV lets you share what's going on right now and actually interact with people uh, you know, while the content's being created. Why hasn't YouTube done live TV yet? So I think... Because it's opened up a huge opportunity for yeah, Justin and Yeah, I think there's a couple reasons. You know, one is that in a lot of ways, live, live looks very similar to live looks very similar to what's archived. A lot of people just think of it as sort of a, a faster time to delivery version of YouTube. But it's actually really different. And the, the analogy that I like to use is, you know, you take watching a party on TV versus going to a party. Yeah. It's the same exact content, but the experiences are, are it's not just a faster version of watching the party, right? You get to interact and, and just the nature of, you know, ch we have chat on the site and chat seems super trivial. We've had it since IRC or you know, ICQ, whenever people started using it. Um, so it's not it's not new in the sense that you know a really tech, uh, kind of technology product might be new, but it's new in the way that it lets you interact around content. So you know while we're doing this interview, somebody could chat and say, "Hey Robert, ask him about uh, you know the new chat that they launched last week, or this you know the new design on the site, or you know when are you going to fix this bug?" Yeah. Um, and that's just a level of feedback. We'll take some questions later, by the way. Yeah. So if anybody's watching yeah, that'd and, be great. and wants to ask us questions, well. And that's just feedback that it's it's really tough to get in other mediums. You know, we could post something on YouTube or, or on uh, Building 43 and, and get a comment and maybe we could do another interview or something like that, but the iteration loop can just be so much faster with live. Um, and the cool thing is that it gets people really engaged. You know, yeah. if we, uh, we've done these surveys and we ask people, you know, what's the main benefit you get out of Justin TV? How do you describe it to friends? And you sort of expect it to be very similar to if you ask that question about a television. Uh, but it's not. People talk about social connections and relationships, and I don't think if I asked anybody, what's the benefit you get out of watching television, that you would talk about social connections. You know, maybe you talk with your friends about Lost the next day, or you know, you might text about a baseball game you're watching. But that's really secondary, right? And, and on Justin TV with live content, it's extremely primary. You know, it's it's in some ways, it's content gets created specifically for that use case. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't how, otherwise exist. How does it compare to the competitor? I mean, Quick is out there doing live TV off of cell phones and Kite. I, I've used Kite.tv mm -hmm. in, in the past, and there's some other ones out there that are live. How does it compete to, with all those? Yeah, so you know, in, in a lot of ways, the products are clearly similar. It's live video. Um, a lot of what we focus on, we think, really differentiates us. So first and foremost, we're a technology company. Three of our four fo co-founders are engineering, or engineers rather. Uh, about 70% of our employees are engineers. They're all, you know, we're all in the same building. We don't outsource anything. So we focus a lot on the technology aspect. Some of the other companies out there focus more on sort of being, you know, B2B companies or media companies. Um, and, the, you know, there's certainly value you can create in that space. But to us, you know, we think we can make the biggest impact as a technology company. Yeah. So we invested a lot of time, a lot of money in building out, uh, you know, our infrastructure, software on the site that, you know, that makes things really fast and responsive. It's things that aren't necessarily you know, one feature or another, but pages load faster, video is more reliable, we can do higher quality, things like that. And that, in the long term, becomes really important. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we, and this is sort of new, we're, we're kind of trying to step back and, and take a new look at how people want to use the service. You know, in the past, we've made some assumptions that, you know, maybe kind of closed off certain use cases. Not closed off in the sense we don't allow them, but just haven't really been open to the idea that, oh, this could be a really powerful way to use live video. Yeah. Um, like so what? what? What do you mean by that? Hold on so, right there. Okay, we're getting no audio on Justin TV. Rob Lujas just said it. So I don't know if you want to fix oh. that. And uh, that thing just kind of fell. So. <laughs> All right, let me, let me look. There you go. We had it muted. Okay, so you should uh, mute. Uh, Let's mute the... Sorry. You get feedback. Really you okay. So somebody called you? Rob? Rob, Rob adjusted. Yeah. Uh, awesome. That's hilarious. Well, thanks. Sorry about um, that. Um, we're just having fun. We are having fun. This is our last interview of yeah. uh, 2009. Shoot, now yeah. we're recording well, and broadcasting on Good. Justin so now we can TV. take some actual questions yeah, once we get there. So I don't remember where we were. I don't know either. But uh, we were talking think, about... Oh, I think oh, we're talking about use cases, right? Use so, cases and how you compare to the competition. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what we're really focusing a lot on is kind of... Uh, our, our VP products had a great line this morning I wanted to use. I think, now I'm forgetting what it was. Something in the sense of kind of empowering what people want to happen to happen without any friction. So one example is gaming has become a huge use case on Justin TV. People will hook up 
uh, you know, the output from their Xbox or their PlayStation to a capture card and actually broadcast live, you know, video game play and talk about it while they're doing it. And that's, I mean, would I have ever guessed that would happen? No. no. But, but it's pretty cool. It's actually fun to watch. Um, and then, I mean, there's some obvious things, events and conferences and stuff like that. But I think, you know, there's, going back to the idea that it's really, in a lot of ways, a very different medium. It's not just faster video. Um, you know, if you look back five years, I don't think anyone would guess that Keyboard Cat would be, you know, a huge YouTube success, right? Because who wants to watch a video of a cat banging on a keyboard? But it turns out 100 million people do. Yeah. Um, and so you look at the way YouTube kind of built their business, you know, maybe only one in every 10,000 or 100,000 videos that got uploaded was really interesting. But what they did was not try to optimize that and make it 10 out of every 100,000. What they did was just say, how can we get more groups of 100,000 videos so that we can just, you know, let the community kind of, you know, have the cream rise to the top. Yeah. Um, so that's really where we are, is that we are trying to... Do you to see YouTube as a competitor? I mean, they've, they've done a couple, right? They did Outside Lands and they did U2, uh, the U2 concert in live. Pasadena. They've done some live couple video, live but only events. for professional. Right. They don't let normal people like me do live video. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and even even you're, you know, far more professional than what we'll call kind of a normal person. So, and I think... I think That's Chad, all due to Rocky, by the way. And Rocky is really what's more professional. Um, I think Chad Hurley at LeWeb mentioned they were going to do one or two events per, uh, per quarter, I think he said. Yeah. So, you know, let's say they do five to ten a year. Um, and again, that's kind of, that's much more focused. They're kind of playing the, a role that we don't think we can play. They're playing the role of being the kind of channel director, right? They're the guy at NBC that says the office goes on at nine and Jay Leno goes on at 10. And that's great. Someone's got to do that. But we, again, going back to the day, we're a technology company. We are not a media company. We're not a content programming company. We want to build the technology and make all the other stuff really, really easy. Yeah. So what we're really focusing on is simplifying it. And we saw, as we set this up, there was a little bug, you accidentally muted the audio, and there was no easy way to tell that. Rocky had to get a call from somebody. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that, you know, we can just make that a lot easier. We could show you a, an audio feedback section on the broadcaster. Uh, we had to open up a separate channel page so that you could see the chat. Um, why shouldn't that be part of the default experience, right? You had to copy and paste your URL and, and open up, I think you opened up Twitter on the web and posted it there. Why shouldn't that happen as a part of clicking broadcast, right? So there's all these things that we've learned that people do and want to do yeah. and are sort of core to the experience that are not connected yet. Um, kind of goes back to the idea, you know, 2007, as you mentioned, Justin was doing his broadcast. We built kind of the site as it exists today, really, toward the end of that year. It uh, started exploding. 2008, really, the company focused almost entirely on scaling. Uh, there was a point where the site was just breaking every single weekend because we were getting tons and tons of traffic and, you know, we're just struggling to grow fast enough internally to support that. Before the audio came on, by the way, we, we were talking that having a live experience versus having a recorded experience, what we're doing over on this side of the room, right. the live experience lets us have chat and talk with a live audience and take questions. And exactly. we'll take questions from them yeah. after we turn off these cameras. Um, what about HD? How is that affecting uh, what, what you guys are thinking of, of doing as live broadcast? The, the camera in the MacBook Pro that we're using is not HD, but these cameras are, so right. we hook these so up. So we actually, uh, it's funny, we support any quality that you want to upload to us. We don't do any transcoding currently. So if you upload a you know, three megabit stream, we'll pump it out. Um, and we've had some really cool, we did a, an event with Comcast. We broadcast the E3 conference last year. Mm -hmm. And you know, we took their $100,000 camera output, put that right up to the site, and it was beautiful. Uh, we do a show with Yahoo every week, and they have a fantasy football show. And we, you know, they have great encoders and cameras, and we take that output. It looks great. Um, and a lot of users do really cool stuff. There's a guy who broadcasts, I think it's about two and a half megabit World of Warcraft gaming. Um, so we support that. The, the funny thing is that the bottleneck there is often not what you would think, which is the HD broadcasting. It's because it's live, and we haven't built in the transcoding yet. So when you do HQ on YouTube, there's an option. You can watch the high-quality version and the low-quality version. Yep. And now with 1080p, that's even more important, right? So the bottleneck's often uh, the viewers watching it. You know, if, if I was at my parents' house this weekend, and they don't have the 20 megabit connection that I have in my apartment, um, and it was hard even just to watch YouTube videos. Yeah. So if I was trying to watch you know, Blu-ray quality over the web, it, it would have been a mess. <laughs> um, so we're, we're working on actually an iPhone app, and that... Uh, one of, the, one of the struggles in the iPhone app was that you have to broadcast in a specific format to get the iPhone player to yeah. accept it. Um, so to do that, we built in transcoding to the site. 
Um, and actually what we're doing now is we have, we're building the capacity to transcode all the videos on the site. So um, some of the other, I this is kind of getting off topic, but some of the other iPhone apps out there for live video only let you watch specific channels on the site. And the reason is that it has to be in a certain format and doing the transcoding on live is really tough. Yeah. So it goes back to the idea that we're a technology company. So we're trying to solve these technology problems. So we built a system that'll let us transcode any channel on the site. And not only does that mean that they can all be watched on the iPhone, but you know, in the future, maybe uh, you know, we'll take, if, if you and Rocky wanna you know, upload your, your 1080p video, we'll take that in. And for the users that can watch it, they're gonna have that great HD experience. But it means that we'll still be able to support the users who are on, you know, my parents' uh, kind of slower cable connection in New York who only get maybe 500K or a megabit and can't take that super high quality video. Um, so that's, again, kind of a, a unique challenge of live. It goes back to maybe why doesn't YouTube do this? It's, even though they look very similar in some ways, there are different not only product challenges but technology challenges and, and of course, use cases. So, yeah. you know, YouTube's clearly built a great product. I think, they have, I think they feel they have a lot of work to do on it to make it even better. Um, segmenting that to live, it, it's not quite as easy as just you know pushing out the video a little bit faster. It's really a different experience. Yeah, uh, tell me how important the um, iPhone and, and Android mobile phones in general are to Justin. Because I know I know I've been watching a lot of Justin TV in the on the freeway, which uh -huh. is sort of weird. But a lot of video, you don't need to see the picture. You just need to listen right. to it, right? Yeah. Like all the web videos I've been listening to. While I drive, you know, yeah. from here to San Francisco, it's forty-five. I minutes. remember you told me for startup school, you were driving up and you had somebody actually called you and played the audio over speakerphone, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I think mobile is hugely important, both from a viewing point of view and a, a creation point of view, um, especially as we see. I mean, it, just in the last two years, cameras have gotten so much better. I was playing with the Droid last week, and the camera on that thing is phenomenal. Five megapixel. Yeah, I mean, compared to and the, the iPhone camera is you know certainly Two very megapixel. good, but the Droid camera just kind of blows out of the water, and I'm sure that's only gonna you know kind of go hockey stick as we go forward. Um, so I think that's hugely important. Uh, we're gonna see bandwidth get better, the quality get better, and people will be able to you know broadcast, I mean, literally, we say anything now, but literally anything. You're at a hockey game and, you know, your family wants to see it, you broadcast it. You're at a baseball game and a fight breaks out, you broadcast it, right? All this stuff. Um, or, or, you you know, we just had a baby and you're in the hospital, you can't get Wi-Fi sometimes. Exactly, exactly, yeah. You I want mean, the grandparents to watch that can't travel, you can just turn on a camera. Exactly, so I think that's going to be hugely important. There are, like I mentioned, there's some specific technical challenges, like getting the video in the right format. Um, and, and supporting the ways to do that uh, across the site. One of the reasons that we've waited to develop an iPhone app is we wanted to make it, you know, a lot of the other ones out there, we feel like kind of cut the corners in a few places, like only allowing, uh, only allowing certain channels to broadcast to the app. So, you know, that solves 80% of the use cases probably, um, but those 20%, it's, it's a really disappointing experience to want to do something um, and not be able to do it, right? It's, yeah. it's just kind of, it, it leaves you with this bad taste in your mouth um, in a lot of ways. Do you guys think uh, that you're gonna go and, and do a mixture of live and record it? Because one thing with the, uh, the web videos and the, and the um, uh, Justin TV app on the iPhone is if the 3G connection disappears, which it does because it's AT&T, right. <laughs> uh, the video stops playing, right? And then you go back, and it doesn't go to that spot. So there's some some improvements you need to make there. Right. But I'd love to have it cached on my iPhone, so I don't need to worry about my bandwidth. I can download five videos here on Wi-Fi, for instance, keep them on the phone, and then watch them when I have uh, an opportunity to do that. Yeah. So we do support on demand. So everything that gets broadcast on the site is archived, and you can make clips out of that that function kind of the way YouTube videos work. Uh, we built actually a pretty cool feature on the site. I think last summer that we called the Justin TV DVR. Essentially, you could there's a little link under the under the video that says watch later, and you get this URL that has like a timestamp appended to the end, and it'll when you open it, it'll automatically take you to that place. So if you're watching something, you need to run out, pick up the kids, just copy that URL, you come back, you pick up right where That's you left cool. off. Um, there's no there's no plans at the moment to put that into the iPhone app, um, but certainly as we develop it, you know if that's something that that, that we hear demand for, and you've got a great point. You know, in a cell connection, there's a there's a much better chance that you're going to have some kind of problem like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that there's certainly a mixture. Getting to your question, certainly a mixture of on demand and live is really important. Um, you know, you, you you hate to miss something and then say, oh, I can't watch it because it was only live. Um, I, th I think finding a way to really easily bridge that gap because 
because of the nature of live, there's there's often a lot more kind of hay versus needles. You know, there's a yeah. lot of stuff. If you're broadcasting a, a eight hour day conference for three days, you don't want to have to wade through 24 hours of video to find your one thing. So it goes back to the idea of how do we make it really, really simple to get exactly what you want, even if it's different than what I want or what Rocky wants or what somebody else wants. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that kind of what we're calling the post live experience um, is certainly really important, especially, you know, if as things get shared across the web, there, there be builds this latency. So if I see a link on Twitter a day after a broadcast, I shouldn't be penalized for not having been right there when it happened, even though maybe there's more value in seeing it right when it happens because I can interact and, and it's newer. Um, but yeah, there, there's still, you know, we do some things to support it. I think we're going to do more in the future to make that process a lot simpler. What do you think about uh, Adobe versus Microsoft, the Flash versus Silverlight? Because the Olympics will be in Silverlight format. Is there a, a need for... Uh, or not a need, but is there a reason that uh, Justin TV will go with Silverlight or go with Flash? We, we use Flash right now. Um, you know, Flash has ninety nine point something percent penetration, I think. So, um, and, and we've built, we've done a lot of work around Flash. One of the cool things, again, going back to this transcoding stuff we're working on, is that if there becomes a need to pump out a Silverlight version of this video, we can do it. Um, you know, it lets us. A, a lot of what we work on the product side is kind of designed to let us be very flexible. Going back to the idea of, you know, we want to let uh, I think it was emergent behavior is what is what our, our VP products called it. We want to let emergent yeah. behavior happen. Um, if people want to, you know, find some cool new use case that no one in the company ever thought of, which is not that unlikely, um, we, we want to let that happen. If if there's a, a compelling reason to use Silverlight or Flash or something completely new, we want to be able to let that happen. You know, we don't want to we we don't do a lot of work that says here's a, a Silverlight app we're going to build. Um, because maybe that's not the solution. Even if even if something non-flash might be the answer, we want to find a way to do it that's very extensible. What do you guys think about HTML5? Because it's starting to get adoption. I iPhone supports a lot of HTML5. Yeah. And, uh, are you guys going to switch away from Flash or away from a player methodology to there, being pure HTML? There's no plans to um, on the product roadmap. That doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, I think that. There's been a lot of really cool stuff. I saw. I think it was Next Stop was the mm -hmm. company you posted a video from last week, and they opted for that over an iPhone app. Um, so on the mobile side, there's certainly a lot of cool stuff you can do. There's also a lot of cool stuff you can do with the native app. It lets you be a lot more integrated and, and kind of smoother. Um, but at, on, on a broader level, you know, there's no plans, but that's not to say we won't do it again. We want to be really flexible. So everything we do on the product side is designed to kind of if, if there's a reason to, to, to make that product, whether it's a mobile reason or a desktop reason or something else, we want to be in a position that we can kind of pivot really quickly on that. You know? And I think making decisions like we want to build an HTML5 enabled player now kind of limit us because maybe, maybe next year, you know, maybe, maybe we want Silverlight, maybe we want HTML5. Um, who knows? You know, we, want to, we want to kind of say, here's the broadest, most extensible technology solution we can build for this. Um, that's really what the company is optimized for. That's what our employees and our, our, our founders, you know, really kind of built the company around. What? Tell me about the infrastructure you guys are on. What does that look like? How many data centers? How many servers? What can it deal with in terms of streams per minute? You know, it, so it, it kept up very well with uh, La Web, which had tens of thousands of people watching in one day. But tell me what's going on there. Yeah. So we fun uh, fun fact: we actually have more incoming video to Justin TV than YouTube. YouTube's latest published stats, I think we're about 23 hours of video per minute is uploaded. We get close to 30 hours of video per minute. So on the broadcaster side, it's 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 weird. It kind of, you, you didn't expect that, I'm sure. Yeah. And I actually didn't expect that. It was funny, back in May was the first time they published that data, and it was like 20 hours per minute at the time. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm kind of curious what our, what our equivalent stat would be. So I went and I looked it up in our stat system, and I was like, oh, oh it's actually more. I didn't, didn't expect that. Um, so... It's it's really really incredibly scalable. Back to you know 2008 was really the year of scaling the, the site. Um, we have moved. When we first started, we were all on hosted solutions, so we were on Amazon's uh, EC2 at the time. Uh, we moved from that to Akamai to serve all mm -hmm. of our bandwidth. And actually, early uh, I think in April or May of this year, we actually brought all of that uh, or nearly all of that internal. So we have a, a big data center in South San Francisco. And we've got other locations in the U.S. We're actually building one out in London early in 2010. Um, we have a, a couple hundred video servers. Um, you know, I don't want to go too much into the details of, of how we do that, but essentially we've built both the hardware side and the software side of, of our technology to be incredibly scalable. So we have we built an internal uh, solution for how we replicate streams across servers that is completely proprietary. 
uh, and custom. Did the same thing for how we cache pages. So, um, you know, everything's designed to be really fast, really, uh, really high quality, and really efficient. Uh, we have a couple cool stats about page load and video load compared to some of our competitors, and it's something that you know, it's not TechCrunch wouldn't write about it. It's not something we put on a feature list, but to uh, to the user experience, you know, the time between opening a page and seeing what you want. Every tenth of a second is just pain, right? Every yep. every split second you wait is just a little more. You, you get distracted by Twitter. You, someone, your baby's crying. You go do something else. So the, every split second that we can decrease that is, is really valuable to user experience. Yeah. What's the challenge do you think for 2010 for for live video and for HD video and and interactive experiences? What, mm -hmm. what do you think is going to be the hardest thing to do next year? I think it's I think it's figuring out really what people want to do with it. You know, live video, it's certainly grown. And we, you know, we've seen in the last two or three years, it's, it's grown significantly. But, you know, we think that live video can be a part of what we're calling the everyday web experience. So, you know, you probably see live video every day. Maybe Rocky does. I certainly do. Yeah. Um, but my mom doesn't, right? And my, my sister doesn't um, because they're not in Silicon Valley. They're not working in the web. And, you know, maybe they'll come across it by accident, but it's not, it's certainly not a part of what they do every day on the web, the way that news or images are. Yeah. Um, we think that it can be. I think one of the one of the big challenges is that live requires more customization in some ways. You look at, you know, recorded video works really well in kind of the channel page or embedded format, right? And yeah. it doesn't require, not to say that people don't do more customized things, but it works very well in that format. We think there's a lot of really cool use cases for live that need more customization. So one that I think is cool is, let's say, financial services. Um, maybe I upload my taxes to TurboTax, and I, I don't know if I should itemize something or deduct something. Um, and I could have some you know, live video tax consultant. He could look at my form and point to something, and I could see what he was doing. Now, that's a use case that I think would be extremely powerful. It might not work within the confines of you know, a Justin TV channel page, just because you know maybe chat public chat certainly wouldn't make sense, right? And maybe some of the elements on the page wouldn't make sense. But live video is a really important component of that. Yeah. And those those use cases are everywhere. There's gaming. There's customer service. There's retail, e-commerce, etc. Um, so I, th I think finding ways to figure out what people want to do and then empower those. Whether we do it on the site via uh, we launched an API last year that has seen some really cool use cases. What what is what is that the API being used for? So essentially, the API lets you kind of use our live video. You know, we've taken all the hard work out of video um, and integrate that into other apps. So there are a couple of companies that launched it. TechCrunch did their second real-time stream conference earlier this year. Uh, a couple of companies were using it there to kind of, uh, one was called Video Lobby, I think, and it's essentially they kind of simplify the getting a channel started process and kind of has some themes and ways to integrate other accounts. Um, but you know, should they replicate all the work of building in a data center and doing all this hard live video work? No, the same reason they shouldn't rebuild Twitter, right, just to use Twitter. Um, so they use our, our video API and, and build in, basically we take care of the streaming and, and, the, uh, and the player, you know, and they can work on all the other stuff that is kind of unique to their users. Um, there's a company called Highlight Cam, which is a YC company. They have a technology that- YC is uh, y, y Combinator. Combinator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you guys were funded by, y, by Paul Graham and exactly. Y Combinator. Exactly, um, So what they do, they have a technology that is kind of an automated highlight finder. The example is, you know, let's say you have a video of uh, of your house or a pet cage or something, and you know, 99% of that time might be really boring. But when someone breaks through your window or when your dog, you know, does a backflip or something, you want to catch that. But you don't want to wade through 10 hours of video to find it. So they uh, take in video from uh, Justin TV, uh, analyze it with their technology, and automatically create essentially a highlight clip of that. So those are just a couple of examples. I think as we go on, kind of find more of these emergent use cases. Um, we're going to see what people really want to do. So I think 2010 for us is really about kind of identifying what people want and then building ways to make that, not only empower that, but make that really, really simple. You know, we're, we have some changes coming to the website, both in viewing and broadcasting. What they're really designed to do is, you know, we, we've done a lot of research into what people are doing on the site, chatting, broadcasting, sharing in certain ways. Put that stuff front and center. Take the stuff that isn't being used and either get rid of it or hide it. Um, so that it becomes a lot more streamlined to, to set up a channel. Because again, that, that's still really tough for a lot of people. You know, we see people who, who want to use it, you know, I think, and could do really cool things with it, um, but they just kind of get hung up on this, you know, I don't know what button to click, or, uh, you know, when we see people do stuff that just seem, we would never think of, like copy the embed code and put that into a yep. URL bar and then get really frustrated that it doesn't work. Yep. Um, and that's, that's something that's it's hard to, 
you know, all the QA in the world internally isn't necessarily going to catch that. Yeah. Um, you got to sit and watch uh, how people use it. Exactly. So kind of we, we've done a lot of work on that in the last uh, four or so months, five months maybe. Um, so 2010 is really going to be about implementing that, putting the changes onto the site, you know, t testing how to make it work. Very cool. Well, we got to go. We learn more about it on justin.tv. Absolutely. We can try it out. And we'll take some questions uh, after this interview is cool. over on our uh, live streaming. So. Cool. Thank you.